Now this is not for you. This is for me because I've been good, done my candida cleanse and got my candida overgrowth under control. So do your cleanse, reintroduce the foods that you leave out now properly and I will see you on the other side with a watermelon. And it doesn't have to be difficult at all. Just in a bit I will show you how yummy and satiating vegan candida cleanse menu actually can be. No, I'm sorry about the changing light because uh, I have only one artificial light and this side is outside and it's raining and the clouds are coming and going and so it's really difficult to adjust. I will just let it be. Just a note, my own cleanse back in 2016 was much more rigid. I excluded even applesauce, all berries, fruits of course, legumes, mushrooms and even matcha. However, I've learned a great deal since then and now know that this is not absolutely necessary in most cases. In fact, you will see me using applesauce, wild blueberries and mushrooms in this video. And bear in mind though that applesauce absolutely needs to be unsweetened without any additives and preferably made of green apples. In any event, should your case be very severe, it'd be better to leave out the apples and berries all together at least for a few weeks until your symptoms start to abate. Furthermore, the majority will do just fine by adding lentils and mung beans into the menu already in the beginning of the cleanse, especially sprouted. I address the issue of the foods in the grey area such as low glycemic fruits and berries, legumes, grains that contain gluten, starchy veggies and mushrooms in my vegan candida meal plan. The value of my candida meal plan lies in tailored, balanced meals that don't exceed the recommended glycemic load while also covering the RDAs for all micronutrients. So I don't merely provide recipes but I also give you a step-by-step -step guide to compile balanced meals according to your preferences and produce availability. For more information on candida overgrowth in general, namely symptoms, causes, testing and treatment, make sure to download my very thorough free guide. Let's start with this yummy low glycemic oat bran cauliflower porridge. First, in a small bowl, pour enough water on the rolled oats to cover and set aside. Then, using a grater or food processor, make rice cauliflower. Cook cauliflower and oat bran in soy milk or water for 5 minutes, stirring occasionally. You can also add the rice cauliflower for the last 1-2 minutes if you prefer it crunchier. Now turn off the heat and mix in the soaked rolled oats along with cinnamon, ginger and salt. Add water or plant milk if necessary. Finally goes in mosquito flour. You can also use cardop or any other low glycemic sweetener. Here you go. Top with cranberries or any other low glycemic berries and hemp seeds or other seeds of preference. This is just so yummy and creamy. To save time, make a bigger batch of rice cauliflower. I usually make enough for 3 to 4 days. It's so convenient to store it in a sealed container in fridge and grab it whenever needed. For more ideas, go and watch my video on how to make low glycemic porridges. This one here is with lentils and it's one of my favourites. I'll cover candida friendly snacks and desserts towards the end of this video, but now it's lunchtime. The key to beating candida overgrowth is eating plenty of low glycemic fiber rich, hence satiating foods. So let's start with about 2 cups of romaine lettuce, followed by shredded raw red cabbage and carrot. The latter is something that most people can have also on cleanse, but you have to listen to your body and leave it out in case your symptoms do not abate. For protein, I decided to have good quinoa and edamame beans. Here's avocado for healthy monounsaturated fats, sprinkled with some lemon juice. 
Let's whip up a really simple and quick dressing by mixing together plain soy yogurt, miso paste, Indian spice mix, garlic powder and lemon juice. You can use any plain plant yogurt instead of soy. Here we go! Simply sprinkle it on your bowl and eat it neatly as it is or mix everything together to enhance flavors. My tip is to cook everything in batches, so it will be even quicker to compile a bowl in the evening or even the next day. Since I used only raw veggies in my lunch bowl, the dinner will be mostly about cooked greens. Here's steamed kale, broccoli, asparagus, mushrooms, cooked black rice, raw bell pepper. My daily iodine intake in the form of soaked bokame seaweed. And for the dressing, I'm combining soy yogurt and tomato paste. You might add some miso or tamari, pepper and spices of choice, but I like it also plain as that. I added such a small amount of rice because my dessert will be grain-based. raw buckwheat ricotta with wild blueberries. I used sprouted buckwheat for maximum benefits, but you can limit it to soaking. However, sprouting diminishes the glycemic load of grains and legumes, as well as makes them easier to digest. Next ingredient is plain oat yogurt and then wild blueberries. Then I use an immersion blender to process everything. Make sure you indeed use the wild variety, as garden blueberries have much higher glycemic load and tend not to be suitable on candida cleanse diet. Add any suitable low glycemic sweetener if necessary. I usually go for mosquito powder or lucuma powder, or sometimes also opt for erythritol or a few drops of stevia. If you have a severe case and even berries are not an option, Simply leave them out or instead make a chocolatey version with cara powder. It's really so yummy and satiating dessert or even snack. Let's move on to more snack and dessert ideas. My all-time favorite pancakes are those oatmeal pancakes, which go so well with applesauce, plant yogurt, my healthy chocolate sauce or nut butter and of course my matcha latte. By the way, Leave at least an hour between meals and matcha if you have issues with iron absorption. To be honest, I also like those pancakes plain. They make either a good brekkie or a snack. Another candida cleanse friendly pancake recipe that I love is my chocolatey buckwheat sourdough pancakes that I will link up here. Again, it's a great recipe for batch cooking and therefore making your life easier. Next up are savoury sorghum muffins. My vegan candida meal plan also includes oat bran zucchini muffins, my first ever candida muffins, I'll link those below. Those sorghum muffins are so good that I've been eating at least one daily since I created the recipe in January, so that's that. Like the pancakes, also those muffins fall into both breakfast and snack category. In addition, you could even eat one with your lunch or dinner. And once more, they make an excellent patch cooking item to add to your repertoire. Another grainy, bready snack would be those sprouted buckwheat crackers. If sprouting sounds intimidating, soaking will do. However, I really suggest trying it out. It doesn't require any special equipment or skills. Have them plain or with plant yogurt or nut butter. It's not too hard to make your own almond butter, as it can be quite pricey if store-bought. You can watch a separate video on how to make almond butter at home. For some light snacking, choose raw, non-starchy veggies like cucumber, cauliflower, bell peppers, turnip, tomatoes, kohlrabi, celery, carrots and some sprouts. If you need to dip them into something, go for plain plant yogurt or nut butter, or even the salad dressings I showed you earlier. Nibble on raw nuts and seeds like hazelnuts and almonds, brazil nuts for daily selenium, 
sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds and walnuts. It's advisable to soak them first and then freeze or dehydrate and store in the fridge. Should you be fond of a heartier snack that also qualifies as a dessert, I'd suggest bliss balls made of ingredients that are suitable on candida cleanse. Recipe video link up here and in description. Make sure to sub carob for cacao and add less sweetener as carob is so sweet per se. The only thing I do differently for myself to save time is that I skip the ball forming part. Instead, I transfer the batter into a container, store it in the fridge and whenever I need a yummy sweet snack, I scoop out a decent portion and form a single giant ball to accompany my tea. As you can see, the batter gets much firmer on the second day. Another chocolatey candida cleanse treat would be those chocolate chip cookies with homemade carob chips. Needless to say, I have a tutorial video on how to make both the cookies and chips. Now go right now and download my free guide to Candida Overgrowth. And don't forget that you can support my work by liking, commenting and subscribing, especially hitting that bell button for notifications as well.